Good evening, this is the Oscar expert at the Cannes Film Festival. It's time to review Benedetta. This is the latest film from Paul Verhoeven, and I have to admit that I'm not all that familiar with anything he's done. The only movie I've seen from him is Elle, and I think not knowing what to expect from this director in that movie made me a little bit thrown off by it. I didn't know quite what to make of it. But I've come to understand that there are some Verhoeven experts out there who really have studied his style a lot and some of the themes that go on throughout his movies, and I think those people are really going to get a lot out of this, and they're going to be able to dissect the movie in a way that I don't think that I could be able to see. But I don't think that you need to be in on the Verhoeven-ness to be able to enjoy Benedetta. The film follows a nun living in a covent who's tempted by another nun to commit acts that are considered unspeakable within the framework of her religion and her lifestyle. And I'll also say that Jesus ends up working through this character in wild fucking ways. I will not spoil the movie any further than that. There are a lot of reviews out there that are just flat out spoiling some of the great surprises in the movie, especially one about a certain prop which was a great and hilarious reveal, and it's unfortunate that some people now know exactly what that is. The movie is a total romp, and it might be a little bit something more. But first and foremost, it's a great time, it's a wild ride. The movie delivers the sex, violence, humor, and satire that you want it to. I found it to be a really entertaining, exciting movie, and I was always looking forward to where it was gonna go next. The movie feels like it's pulled from an alternative, more fun, indulgent Bible. And to my surprise, it's actually adapted from a real thing about lesbian nuns in the 17th century. The presence of Jesus and of God in this movie, to me, was real. Some people, I think, are going to interpret this as they're like kind of overblowing everything in their heads. But to me, I think the movie did want you to take that seriously. Or maybe it wants to leave that ambiguous whether or not the presence of Jesus is real in the movie. But I kind of read it as like a fantasy film where indeed Jesus does do his works in the movie. I don't think the movie's trying to paint these characters as being delusional and making up what's around them. I think the movie works better because it takes its characters seriously. But just because Jesus might be like a real figure in this movie, doesn't make the movie pro-Catholicism, I don't think. Because there are a lot of lines making fun of the church, and I think it is a movie that enjoys being blasphemous. And I'm just gonna jump in here to say that the movie is actually really funny. It's a really well put together movie. It's very well shot, some great costuming and production design, and a very grand score. Some might view the score as being a little hammy, and I think that's kind of correct, but it's not a bad thing. The film's tone is hard to put your finger on, because on one level it does commit hard to creating an engaging drama where you take the events seriously, and yet the way that it indulges in sex, violence, and self-aware humor does bring a little bit of a campy quality to it. So I think the score is a sort of perfect combination where it sounds really good to the ears, but it's also a little purposefully overdone. And I have to mention that Virginie Efira is excellent in the lead role. And Charlotte Rampling is also really great in her supporting role. And although you could just view this movie as just being a total trip and have a great time not thinking much about it, I wouldn't argue that the movie is empty of substance. The satire of the whole thing is that these women are told that the path to Jesus is through your suffering. And acts that are defined as heinous by the church are going to torment your soul and send you to hell. But the film ends up questioning that aspect of religion and it kind of says, what if Jesus does want your pleasure? Who even made up that he gives a shit what you do in your bedroom. The most controversial aspect of this movie has been, of course, the sex. And that conversation has made me think about how it's weird that people need to think really hard about like why this is justified and why the sex scene needs to happen. And yet some mindless violence or like some fucking sky portal shit could happen for 30 straight minutes in a movie. And people are like, yeah, it's fun, who cares? But Verhoeven's philosophy seems to be whether or not like the scene does contribute something to a, the story, who gives a shit? And I do think that the sex scenes are well justified here. The relationship between Benedetta and Bartolomea might be lust, but it's a deep, trusting, loving kind of lust. And even if the sex scenes were just for fun, a little something for the girls and the boys to enjoy, who really cares? I really enjoyed the movie. I wouldn't have minded if it went a little bit further down like the whole craziness and turned it up to an 11 towards the end. Maybe that's just me. I'm not really sure it's the kind of movie that I would like revisit or that I got like a ton out of substantively, but I did think it was a really good movie going experience. I would give it an eight out of 10. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. What kind of unholy acts do you commit?